Today on Changing Your World. It's when you can't figure out what to do that you refocus your attention on nothing but God. Let's join Dr. Creflo Dollar for today's message. Mark chapter 9 and uh, verse 22 and 23. Let's read 22 and 23 out loud together. Read it, read. And oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Again, this is a story about the, de the demoniac who was cured, the boy who would sometimes cast himself in the fire because of the demon possession. And I can imagine the parent of this child said, Lord, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. Now, his attitude was, Lord, you, won't you do something for me? I need you to do something for me. And there are lots of people around waiting on God to do something for them. But look how Jesus responded in the next verse, verse 23. Read it, read. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Jesus said, instead of you waiting to see if I can do something for you, he said, I'm waiting to see uh, what you will believe. Can you believe it? Because if you can believe it, God said, I can do it. If you can believe it, God said, he'll do it for you, you know. So it's not, you know, is God going to do something for me? It is, can you believe what, how much can you believe for? Can you believe for uh, the thing that seems to be impossible to become possible? We, we, we've got to become possibility thinkers and not impossibility thinkers. And you got you to get that out of your head that this thing is impossible because of who you know, there's nothing impossible. And you know the God of possibilities, amen? The God who can take impossibilities and turn those around. Now let's pick up where we left off in the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. We kind of whisked through this and I want to go back and pick up some things. Isaiah chapter 38 verse 1. This uh, verse 1 through 3 talks about Hezekiah's sickness. And it appeared to be an impossible situation. But the question is always going to be, what is it that you can believe for? What is it that you can believe for in the midst of an impossible situation? All right, notice here, Isaiah 38, verse 1, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet of the psalm Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Please note that he did two things after getting the bad news. Number one, he turned his face to the wall. Number two, he prayed unto the Lord. And then in verse 3, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Underline perfect heart. I walk before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. He wept sore or he wept greatly or he wept with great weeping. Now, first thing Hezekiah did, notice he turned his face to the wall. Now, there are lots of reasons that people hadn't gotten results, but the reason many people haven't gotten results yet is because they're looking to man for results. Perhaps they're looking for some prophet to deliver them. But Hezekiah not only turned away from man, he even turned his face from Isaiah, who was the greatest prophet in that time. Oh, man.
He turned his face away from his own sensations. He turned his face away from his own symptoms. He turned his face away from his own sufferings. He turned his face away from his sympathizing relatives. He turned his face away from medical skills. He turned his face to the wall. And with his face to the wall, Hezekiah could only see one thing, God. I believe God wants us to get to the point where we quit seeing everything else and not see him. We got to get to the point where we can't see nothing but God. And if people today would turn from everything else and turn to Christ, then they would find that he is still the refuge and that the only safe place, really, folks, is in him. Hallelujah, man. I find safety in his arms, praise God, regardless of what's going on. Peace in his arms when we can turn away from those things. There are lots of distractions going on in the world today. Lots of different things going on uh, battling for your attention. And the Bible says to attend to my word, you know. And so we've got, to, we've got to practice and begin to develop in turning away from all those other things and start focusing in on God and start saying, God, you're my, you're my uh, treasure. You're the one that I trust. You're the one that I know I can be safe. You're the one that I know can heal me. You're the one that I know can deliver me. I, 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 I've been trying to work this thing out myself, Lord, but you know what? I'm, I, it's stick them up time. I'm getting ready to surrender to what I know you can do for me. You know, sometimes God's just waiting on that. God sometimes will lead us into impossible situations just to see if we will invite him in on the task so that he can come in and help you out. I think there's some people here tonight that need to just surrender and say, look, Lord, all, I'm going to do all I know to do. And then at that point, I ain't going to see nothing but you because I got to, I, I don't know. You know, folks, there have been times in my life and, and in this ministry, I didn't know what to do next. Now, I ain't going to stand up and tell folks, well, I don't know what to do because that's not what a leader's supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, what I look like coming in the pulpit, you know, well, you know, y'all pray because I, I sure don't know what to do. <laughs> now, I'm going to open my mouth by faith and, and I know how to walk by faith. I know how to believe God. Hallelujah. And turn and see God. Can you see God in the thing you're trying to get out of? Can you see God in the midst of the pressure that you might be going through right now? Now, let me give you an illustration of this. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. You talk about pressure. Look at this. 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'll show you an example of a man who turned his face to the wall to where he could see nothing but God. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. This is talking about David and the Amalekites, how they came. And Well, let's read it. 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. Now get a hold of this. I want you to, to just imagine if you were David and you're getting ready to get this news and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So their wives had been kidnapped. So David and his men came uh, to the city and behold, it was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. That's like for a man, you coming home and your house has been burnt down. Your wife has been kidnapped. Your children have been kidnapped. They even took your goldfish, man. <laughs> then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and they wept. Watch this. Until they had no more power to weep. That's hurt, right? That's pain. Now watch this. And David's two wives, okay, whatever, were taken captives. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and David was greatly, what? Distressed. For the people spake of what? Stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved because they had lost. Every man for his son and for his daughter. Okay? Now, folks, can you imagine how much stress David had on him that day? Can you imagine the situation David was in? First of all, David don't know what to do because David don't know what happened. David don't know who showed up. David don't know who kidnapped him. David don't know who burned the village. David knows nothing. And that's even more frustrating, wanting to do something, but don't even know nothing. 